Hey, what's going on? It's Nash here talking about sleeping bags. And if you've ever packed for anything ever, you know that space and weight are your primary concerns. You want everything as small and compact as possible. So what do you do? You're out with uh, my style of sleeping bag, which is like this. And you're looking at your ratings and you're like, ooh, 30 degrees, that's good enough. And you get in your sleeping bag and you're like, shit, I'm cold. Well, short of uh, getting a big ass beast like this sleeping bag that's three times the size of your tent, if you're using something like that. This is the type of tent I use. You'll notice that it takes up the same amount of space as my sleeping bag, but it's not nearly as squishy. Even as small as this is, still squishy. If it's not cold enough to snow, and then way colder than that, I cannot be bothered lugging this style of thing around. But what do you do when you get out there, short of taking up all your space and lugging around a giant sleeping bag? What do you do? What do you do? Get a new sleeping bag. Or, more realistically, modify the sleeping bag you've got. The good trick is to get a Mylar blanket. It's about like this. Also known as uh, space blankets or emergency blankets. The emergency here being, I'm not as comfortable as I would like to be. So you take it, boom, they're huge. They're not literally weightless, but they're practically weightless. Fairly durable. What with them uh, being designed to be used in emergencies and all. And, almost impossible to unwrap. Whatever. Anyway, they're super duper thin, practically weightless. So Mylar works by reducing convectionary heat loss, which is through the air in this case, which is also what your sleeping bag does. Um, it works a bit by reflecting your own body heat back into you, and then uh, it mostly works by trapping the moisture in kind of like a poncho, which I hate. But uh, theoretically, you could put this into your sleeping bag, wrap yourself in it, then insert yourself in the sleeping bag, or more appropriately, insert this between the layers of your sleeping bag. But we're gonna put it to a, uh, a scientific test. We're going to get the ambient temperature of the air, then test the inside of the temperature of the sleeping bag without me in it then inside the sleeping bag with me having been in it for 15 minutes, then the inside temperature of this, then me in this, and finally me inside of the sleeping bag that's reinforced with this. And uh, theoretically, we should see a huge difference. So, if we do this correctly, we'll be able to keep ourselves warmer without adding any extra weight or size to the gear we're already carrying. We won't be uh, soaking in our own juices from the trapped in moisture. Nothing ruins my sleep quite like stewing in my own juices. Really seals in the flavor. Right, I've managed to locate an extremely old promotional analog mercury thermometer. Um, apologies to anyone who's a fan of science or cohesiveness, because this is only in Fahrenheit. So we'll, uh, we'll subtitle this with the Celsius conversions. The ambient temperature of the room right now is at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we're going to put this into the sleeping bag for 15 minutes and test what temperature that is. All right, let's see what we got here. There it is. All right, here we go. And the thermal baseline for inside the sleeping bag is... 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Moving on. And now, 15 minutes in this magical heat cloak. We'll pretend it's like a person, so I won't bundle it up. We'll give it one, one nice tight layer. That's about what you would get if you weren't the size of a thermometer, so that's where we'll check back up on it in 15. 15 minutes later, our basal temperature is 64 degrees. So now, 
We'll see what kind of temperatures we can make with me curled up all snugly in there. For 15 minutes. Okay. Got my, uh, analog mercury thermometer. I'm just gonna get all snugly in here. Ugh. Slip this in. Let nature do the rest. Okay, it's been 15 minutes with most of my torso and arms and head out. And our temperature is now 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we'll try magic heat cloak. So now I'm going to lay in this thing sort of, I don't know, baked potato style. What's this? Yeah. I think regular blanket style might be the best way. Tuck this, tuck this all up under here. I'm gonna jam this in here, and we'll see uh, see what happens in 15 minutes. Alrighty, we've got eighty. 86, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Yay! Now we combine the two and see how that goes. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Combined, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that doesn't sound like too much of an increase, but you got to keep in mind that uh, I've only been in here for 15 minutes with half of my body exposed, so that's half of the heat. Just been uh, evaporating out, doing, you know, what it does, energy exchange and whatnot. So, if I was all snugly tucked in here, I'd be retaining a lot more heat. So, what I recommend, there's several different ways to go about uh, putting these in here. What I've done right now is I've just wrapped this around me and then gone into the sleeping bag. That's uh, super loud and obnoxious. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Uh, bonding it to the sleeping bag might be better, but not in one solid layer. Uh, strips, that way some, some moisture can escape so that you don't wind up soaking in your own broth for the entirety of the evening. Uh, and then on top of that, layers, of course, layers. Moisture wicking clothing. Get your, get your gross sweat away from your body. Uh, and if you get too hot, you can take some of the layers off. If you're still cold, Put on a hat, put on more clothes, get a better sleeping bag, I don't know, this is just uh, one modification you can do if you're slightly too cold. So uh, this way you won't wind up, uh, you know, freezing to death, but you also won't wind up uh, sweating your balls off, or on, if you're a lady. So if anyone has any questions, uh, hit up the comments, I'll do a follow-up video if there's uh, some interest, or maybe you want to see some, some other tricks that I do. The best part of this is that it's a uh, really low effort and lightweight and almost free. It's so cheap. So if you want uh, more tips like that, let me know in the comments section. Um, otherwise, keep adventuring and keep doing it with ingenuity. Nash out.